Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sustaining Sustainability. I'm your host, C.B. Bhattacharya, Professor and Director of the Center for Sustainable Business at the University of Pittsburgh. This week, I'm joined from New York City by James Gowan, Senior Vice President of Global Supply Chain and Chief Sustainability Officer at Verizon. Verizon, as you probably know, is one of the world's leading providers of technology, communications, information, and entertainment products and services, generating 128.3 billion of revenues in 2020. Mr. Gowan will discuss Verizon's carbon neutrality commitment, digital inclusion, and important lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. Jim, welcome to the show. CB, so great to be here and thank you very much for the invitation. For sure. So before we dive into the big questions, could you begin by telling us about your own professional journey at Verizon? How would you define your personal purpose? Absolutely. So uh, before I even go uh, there, I just wanted to, to recognize the University of Pittsburgh and the Center for Sustainable Business it really, really is impressive what you've done there and uh, having the opportunity to, to review some of your research and, and hear other podcasts has been very impressive. So a shout out to you, CB, and your entire uh, team there at the University of Pittsburgh. I, I, I do want to say one thing, though. I, I loved your mission. And in terms of maximizing the value of investments and in sustainable business strategies for all stakeholders. And I, and I read that I underlined the all stakeholders because I that really told me a lot about uh, that you're thinking about this holistic. And, and you'll hear from me and how Verizon thinks about things holistically as well. Um, but to answer specifically your question, I have uh, been with Verizon for over 25 years. Uh, and then I've had the opportunity to be in operations for the majority of my career. Uh, my career changed in 2009 when I uh, was running our, our global supply chain as well as our fleet. Uh, when I was asked to take on the role of sustainability and be Verizon's first chief sustainability officer. And uh, it was just, it was a, a task I was very concerned about because I was not a sustainability uh, person to begin with, but it's been a, a fantastic journey that I've been on uh, for the past 10 years, coming up on 11 years, and uh, could not have imagined my career going any other way than uh, being responsible for sustainability. Verizon is committed to becoming fully carbon neutral by 2035, uh, which is a wonderful ambition. Walk us through where the demand came from for this and, and how the decision was finally made. As I mentioned, we started this in 2009, our journey. And our journey uh, in the early days was focused on you know, internal operations. How do we change things? Well, fast forward to the last... Uh, 24 to 36 months, things have really heated up. Uh, you know, we have moved from doing things uh, for just Verizon to really expanding our reach. Our, you know, our focus is on mobilizing our business to run the most sustainable networks, wireless or wireline possible around the world. We want to make sure we're building resiliency into that. So as you start to think about aspirational things and you start to think about what can we do we started to focus on what we control. And those were our scope one and scope two admissions. And that's where we came up with the goal of being carbon neutral or net zero in our, in our operations by 2035. And I have to say, it really started with the challenge I received from our chairman, Hans Vesper, who wanted to do even more uh, when he took over as CEO. That's where we, um, where we started and that's how we came to that conclusion. Carbon neutrality can be difficult to picture in the abstract and in fact can mean different things to different people. Could you provide some tangible examples of progress that you have made in the past year? Absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's very interesting that you say that because one of the things that we very much are concerned about when we do our program is we want to make sure it's real. We want to make sure it's actionable. My day job is running global supply chain and it's very uh, tactical in terms of transporting things and how we go about bringing goods and services to our customers every single day. But if you step back and you start thinking, okay, on scope one fuels and scope two electricity, how do we go about that? Well, just in the last two years, we have issued two $1 billion green bonds. The first one in 2019 was oversold by over eight times. It was a fantastic 
uh, reception. I was a little bit concerned. I had ne- we had never done one. We were the second one in our industry, the first one in the United States for our industry. So we were a little concerned. It was a great response. We spent uh, the use of proceeds for that in 18 months on green buildings, on renewable energy, and then again on uh, reforestation and some of the biodiversity goals we have. Well, right after that success, we immediately launched another one in 2020. And I will say it's not going to take me 18 months to uh, spend this billion dollars. But it's all about your point, incrementalism. On the renewable energy front, we're focused on greening the grid, not buying credits or recs that people have already done. We want to make sure that we're doing as much as we can to grow uh, green energy as opposed to traditional brown energy. And, And that is a real strong focus on that. Switching topics a bit. So in addition to Verizon's environmental goals, the company also has far reaching digital inclusion initiatives. Could you provide some examples on and and touch on how this relates back to your role as chief sustainability officer? Sure. So uh, Verizon's uh, mission and statement is that we create the networks that move the world forward. uh, And that's how we think about ourselves. Digital inclusion is such a truly important uh, aspect of doing that. Just 2020 with COVID was just a perfect example of, of why uh, broadband connectivity is so important. And that's how really the world got through 2020. But it all folds under our Citizen Verizon umbrella. And from a digital inclusion perspective, we have goals of 10 million youths being provided with digital skills by 2030, over 1 million small businesses Uh, with resources uh, to help them thrive in a digital economy. We actually made um, a commitment through We Mean Business of a million dollars to help small businesses on greenhouse gas. And then we also have a goal of 500,000 individuals being prepared for new jobs uh, by 2030. So it's really taking digital uh, and enabling customers anywhere to do more with that. And then the other pieces, as you asked about, from uh, my role as chief sustainability officer, there's really three three areas. There's digital inclusion, there's human prosperity, and then there's climate prosperity. And all three are equally important. Indeed, indeed they are. And I'm so glad to hear that you're doing so much um, on the inclusion front. And uh, you also mentioned COVID-19. So while we are on the topic of equity, we are now roughly a year out from when COVID-19 was first declared a global pandemic. Uh, so how has COVID-19 impacted your workforce, would you say? Yeah, I, I didn't think I'd ever see anything like this in my career, and it is truly amazing. And as you say, we're just about here in March, one year from uh, the beginning of it. Uh, Verizon, large company, we operate in over 130 countries around the world, and we have over 135,000 employees. We immediately took a large majority of our employees and went and worked from home. But at the same time, we had over 40,000 employees that never went home because they were out running the networks, both our wireless and wireline networks, and they had to be out there maintaining things. So it was a real, real delicate balance. From my other role uh, running our global supply chain, uh, we were focused on how do we get those key supplies, Uh, everything from sanitizer to uh, masks, facial coverings to uh, gloves and wipes and, and all the things needed that our frontline employees needed to have to be able to go in and maintain our networks. So we had to get creative at times. We actually started uh, making our own hand sanitizer uh, in the U.S. in a uh, factory that was shut down because of COVID. We actually repurposed it with a partner of ours and started making our own hand sanitizer. We made masks here, uh, type two surgical masks in uh, the United States as well because we were having challenges depending upon some of the partners around the world because they had their own challenges. So we became self-sufficient. But the other part about uh, COVID-19 was really the resiliency of our networks, the amazing things we did with school districts when children had to go home and we were providing opportunities for children to work uh, and do schooling remotely. My own uh, five children, three of them were remote uh, for almost all of 2020 and they're slowly going back to school, which is great. But then the question always came back, okay, how has your sustainability impacted your programs? The other thing I'm incredibly proud of, we never slowed down. We never stopped 
because of COVID, the plans we had around renewable energy, the plans we had around greening our buildings, uh, greening our cafeterias, for example, you know, and that's what made me most proud. We recognize our customers and our employees are the most important and we need to deliver the best wireless and wireline networks possible, as efficiently as possible, but we also kept our agenda on making sure that we're focused on the environment. And, and you touched on the supply chain. So where do things currently stand with, with the supply chain? I mean, is it back to uh, pre-COVID times or is it still kind of, you know, in, in some kind of interim mode? I, I, we're definitely not to pre-COVID times. And matter of fact, we're, we're still seeing the fallout of COVID. Uh, one, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, the impact of the semiconductor uh, the global impact on semiconductors right now. We are we are in the middle of looking at that uh, and experiencing that and making sure that we're building resiliency into our supply chain. But the other aspects of it are, are just the amount of components and raw materials that are in different countries that have been in varying different stages of the impact of COVID. Uh, some production lines were shut down for final assembly. Some uh, production lines were shut down for creating uh, components and things like that. So we're, we're far from out of the woods. We are in much uh, a much better position, but to truly go a little bit uh, supply chain on you, we need to keep focusing on our transportation. Uh, you probably have seen some of the port congestion. You've seen some of the challenges with containers. Um, you know, from a, from a sustainability and supply chain perspective, my focus is on keeping things off of planes and on boats, keeping things off of trucks and on trains, and trying to do everything we can in a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that we are running the most sustainable supply chain, uh, both forward and reverse logistics. And that is a challenge when your just-in-time inventory is impacted due to whatever the, the situation is due to COVID. Mm, now, now uh, as you know, that many of our guests on the show, uh, um, and me included, and several others have pointed out that COVID-19 is just a glimpse kind of, you know, at the far greater disruptions predicted to occur due to, due to climate change. So what lessons would you say have you taken away from all this that better prepares you for conducting global business moving forward? Well, I'd say at a, at a macro level, Verizon has, has really stretched ourselves and been incredibly proud of the results of our network and our ability to increase the bandwidth so quickly uh, and provide really uh, top-notch uh, wireless and wireline service, the best in the industry through this. So that made us really proud of, of who we are and what we've delivered already, and we're ready to deliver. You can always do better. You're always going to be pushing to do better. Um, but the other piece that I would say is, and this is really back to my uh, other part of my role, is we need to build more resiliency into our overall global supply chains. We need to make sure we're multi-sourced. We need to make sure that we are looking at things, uh, as you all say often, you know, the world has gotten so small, but at the same time, with geopolitical issues, with tariffs, with uh, raw material shortages, uh, we need to make sure that we're looking at things uh, and also how they impact the environment as well, as well as human rights, uh, some things that we're very focused on. Would you care to comment a little bit more on the human rights? What are the main challenges you face there? Well, Verizon, for the most part, does not manufacture products. We do some, but for the most part, we, we work with partners and uh, OEMs. Uh, and, and there are reports out about certain countries in the world where there has been forced labor and things like that. We take that incredibly serious. Uh, we have a credo that we live by at Verizon. Uh, we also build uh, everything into our code of conduct that our suppliers sign up for. So when we are auditing our suppliers or our suppliers supply chain, we are focused on identifying those things. We're looking at you know, just how we can you know, secure a sustainable supply chain free from conflict minerals, from human rights violations. And, and when you partner with people who day to day are your competitors, but then when you get together, this topic is not competitive. This is how we make the world a better place. We make the world a safer place. And we also, you know, care for individuals who at the end of the day could be your uh, brothers, sisters, cousins, or friends, and, and regardless of where they are in the world. 
we need to put sustainability in the pre-competitive space. That's the only way we are going to surmount this challenge. So, Jim, we are coming to the close of our time here. Uh, what is the most important message you want to convey to companies at this time? From a, from a company perspective, you know, and I saw this at Verizon firsthand with our green teams, which, which were organic and came out of one person's idea. We're, we now have over 50,000 employees in over 51 countries that volunteer and our volunteers of the green team. It's about taking action. So whether you're a large company, a medium company or a small company, it's the small things. Um, we believe in building it into our DNA across our company. I encourage everyone to do the same thing. And it's the simple things, drive less, um, make different food choices. Even if it's not all the time, it's just enough. It's drive all those individual carbon uh, impacts in your own life and then bring them to work. We have a slogan at Verizon called work green, live green. Take it from your backyard uh, barbecues and bring it to work if you, if you have great suggestions and vice versa. If we're doing something at Verizon, Bring it back to your backyard barbecue. Share it with your friends. We are all in this together. Uh, there is no um, silver bullet to just save uh, the environment going forward. It's going to be a series of incremental steps. Some of them are going to have to be larger. Uh, we understand that. Well, and this leads nicely then to, to the next question, which is what call to action would you make to, to our other listeners, the regular, the regular Joes out there? <laughs> well, I have to be honest, I'm not worried about your uh, student body and I'm not worried about um, our, our younger generation. Uh, my five children get sustainability better than I ever will because I'm reprogramming myself. Uh, I just am so, so optimistic for future generations because they understand it uh, really from, from grade school when they start learning about what things uh, they can do to, to save the planet. So. You know, my message is the same. We're all in this together. Uh, trust yourself. Uh, be good to each other. <laughs> uh, and then work with, you know, we believe in, in public-private partnerships and get involved in your communities. Whatever that case may be, as little or as much as you can, it's all about, you know, everyone working together. James Gowen, thank you so much for, for, for giving us your valuable time. And thank you for the kind shout out to the center in the beginning. Um, we hope to engage with you more and work closely together to make the world a better place. Uh, thanks for coming on today. Thank you, CB. And this is your host, CB Bhattacharya, saying goodbye. We'll see you again next time for another edition of Sustaining Sustainability. And before I sign off, I do want to say that this podcast is made possible by the help of my colleagues, Leslie Marshall, who is the Associate Director of the Center for Sustainable Business, and Alyssa Martinek, who is the Sustainability Coordinator of the Center for Sustainable Business. I'm your host, C.B. Paracharya. Bye-bye. <music>